Hey guys, welcome to my top 10 best JRPG sequels. Before we begin, I need to clarify something. This is gonna be a two-part video. Today, I'm going to talk about 10 games that, in my opinion, obviously, as usual, uh, are the best direct sequels. What's a direct sequel? Something that, story-wise, happens right afterwards of what happened on the first game or on the first story and whether it's got new characters or not. Most of the time it includes characters from the first story or most of the time involves direct plots or, or plot parts from the first part. So it's gonna be 10 games that are directly connected to the first one, whether they have new characters or not, or the same characters, whatever. And the second part, it's gonna be spiritual sequels. What I consider to be a spiritual sequel is a game that is connected but not directly to the first game. That means that this new part, this, two, this sequel um, may have a new, entirely different characters, entirely different plot, but it's in the same universe and it involves or connects somehow with the first part, but they're not entirely related. They are what I consider to be standalone titles. But today, it's going to be those titles that are directly connected. One of those titles that if you haven't played the first one, you may not understand half or anything of the second part. So with that clarified, let's begin. Number 10, Sinosaga 2. I know a lot of you are going crazy right now saying this belong to a top 10 worst sequels of all time, but I seriously see nothing truly negative that can remove this game from my list. I've read your comments, I've read reviews, I've played the game and beat it, and I see absolutely nothing remarkably hateful or atrocious for it to be called one of the worst. So in my opinion, it's one of the best. Sure, it's not the greatest sequel of all time, and it's far from being it, but it is still a pretty decent one. The problems go mainly for the change in art and some small gameplay features that people didn't like. The game sometimes feels a little too linear, and some of the dungeon designs are, well, pretty monotonous, and some missions can be quite boring, since it's the same after the same over and over again. But those are flaws that do not ruin the experience, at least not for me. It's still a great game, and if you're still hating on it, well, it might help to acknowledge that it belongs to one of the best JRPG trilogies of all time. That, to me, was reason enough to put it on my list. Number 9, Persona 3 Fess. But the answer... I decided to include what could be considered as a spin-off, since it's not a main title, but since this top is focused on direct sequels story-wise, I couldn't just leave it behind. So yes, I know it's supposed to be a spin-off, but it's still a sequel, the true sequel to the popular Persona 3. It follows the events of the previous game, now with Aegis as the main character. Some of the main game features were removed, like exploring towns, making friends, going to school. Overall, the school life simulator was removed. Other than that, the gameplay is almost exactly the same, turning the game into a dungeon crawler more than anything else. But the story is still amazing. The characters are the same ones as before. They have grown and they keep growing during this whole second experience. So it might not count as a standalone title, but it's still a wonderful sequel that I really enjoyed. Number 8. Tales of Symphonia 2 Dawn of the New World. Another game that has been considered as one of the worst sequels ever. Obviously I disagree, and I have even dared to say that it surpasses its predecessor. Like I've said in previous videos, I have nothing against the first Tales of Symphonia. I think it's a great game, I finished it and liked it. I just think it's kind of overrated. Symphonia 2, however, might be underrated and unfairly hated. What bothered people the most was the voice acting of the main character and his useless, annoying personality. That and the fact that there was almost no more character development from the original cast. I disagree. 
I think the previous cast grows even more in this game, and if you consider that, that the story is focused on these new protagonists more than anyone else, well, the answer is obvious. It might have been a better idea to keep the previous cast as the main one and exclude these new characters, but changing that was okay too, and not enough of an excuse to hate on the game. Number 7. Trails in the Sky, Second Chapter Trails in the Sky is actually no big deal. Some people make it seem as one of the best JRPG franchises ever made, but I think that's an overstatement. I believe it's a great trilogy, but not much beyond that. The first game was cool, and this second part doesn't stand behind at all. Not much change in terms of gameplay, it just follows the story literally as a second chapter, which is why it's called that way, more than an entirely new conflict like in Tales of Symphonia 2. So it's the same story, a true follow-up, with the same characters, some new ones here and there, but overall, it was like playing the same game, just a second season as a matter of fact. I think some of the previous games on this list are superior to this one, but I put them behind for reasons that I already explained. No one hates this game, so it got its fair place on number 7. Number 6 goes to Ark the Lab 2. Another game that could have stayed behind, but slightly better to my taste in JRPGs. You know I'm a huge fan of strategy RPGs, so Ark the Lab 2 had to be on the list. This trilogy, however, sandwiched the best of the three. The first game was great, but very, very short. The third was pretty much mediocre and slow, but the second one was an amazing game. It felt more complete and satisfying than the first Art the Lab, and the story was more, way more interesting with a new great cast of characters and a plot that revolves around them and the previous ones from the first game. The music is still awesome, the battle system included some small improvements, which were okay, and like I said, the story felt more compelling. It's way longer than the first one, so I would say that was a big improvement. Number 5. Fantasy Star Universe Ambition of the Illuminus Yeah, I'm a big defender of this game. You might think it's one of my favorites, but it's not. It's just that I think it's very underrated and many people overlooked it. It is another follow-up game, a true sequel that continues where the first game left off, but now with a very unusual plot twist that I will leave to your, your imagination. The thing is that here you control your own character, the one you customize at the beginning of the game, and go into the story as a new character alongside another new character called Laia Martinez. I found the intriguing storyline equally amazing as the first game, and that was reason enough to me to put it on this to put this game on the list. Other than that, no major improvements were made. It's still a hard game with long missions, identical battle system and graphics. So much like Trails in the Sky 2, this could also be considered as a second chapter. Like if it was the same game but divided in two parts. Next is Shadow Hearts Covenant. You know I'm a big fan of Shadow Hearts, so once again I'm going to brag about how cool they are, especially the first two. Shadow Hearts Covenant is a direct sequel of the previous game. It includes new characters into a different plot, but the main protagonist from the first game, which is Yuri, come back, comes back again as the lead character here in Covenant. And since most of the previous story revolved around him and left us with a very unique ending, we continue following his adventures, now in a different conflict, but still carrying his own personal struggle. The game's setting is once again in Europe from during the First World War, and that was something that I really liked. The battle system, the graphics and gameplay were improved. The game feels more delightful to play and the battle system, you know, are more satisfactory than before, so I could easily crown this as the best JRPG sequel ever made. But wait, there are more to come. Dot Hack GU Reminisce. 
Of course, I couldn't ignore what I consider to be the best JRPG trilogy of all time, and that is Dot Hack GU for the PlayStation 2. Reminisce is the follow up sequel to Rebirth. Again, like in previous games on this list, here we have a game that is almost exactly the same in terms of gameplay, music, and graphics to the previous one. You might say the entire trilogy is one single game, but cut into three parts because it just didn't fit in one disc. So if you manage to play these games one day, you will notice very little differences between each other. Nevertheless, that's not a bad thing to say. Reminisce is an excellent sequel and if it's almost identical to the first one, then that's awesome. The small differences between each game, I will leave them up to you to find out for your own for when you play them. So all I can say as of now is that since the entire trilogy feels like one cool long game, then obviously the sequel needed to make an appearance on this top 10. Number 2, Fire Emblem Radiant Dawn. My beloved favorite sequel of all time, Radiant Dawn. Did you know that this game was actually hated back when it first came out? Yeah, it disappointed the heck out of fans of Path of Radiance for many different reasons. The one that I managed to understand and fully accept was that the story, which included a new main cast of characters and the previous ones from the first game, kind of took a different direction than what Fire Emblem usually does. However, this didn't bother me at all and I enjoyed the experience joyfully. One thing to say is that the game can only be played in easy and normal which was a mistake from the localization team because in this North American version if you play on easy you're actually playing on normal playing on normal means playing on hard so yes on consequence it was harder than Path of Radiance but is that bad? of course not! Fire Emblem Radiant Dawn is an amazing sequel that lives up to its name and proves that there can be great sequels out there even in strategy RPGs whether they're hard or not. Number 1. Tales of Cilia 2 I chose this game over my personal favorite because there are no crucial flaws that might make millions of people hate it or criticize it. And since Tales of Cilia 1 was an amazing game that I really loved, then I would have expected nothing less from this marvelous sequel. However, the deal here is a little different than other titles on the list. Just like in Radiant Dawn, there are new protagonists and the main story revolves around them. The main cast from the first Tales of Cilia returns, but only to participate in this new plot going around Ludger, the main character. Some of the original conflicts return and make the previous cast have their own agenda. So overall, story-wise, this game was amazingly done and written. The only small problem that made a few people complain was the famous depth inside the game. But I don't want to spoil anything for you, so I won't talk about it. I actually found that alleged problem to be cool and interesting, so you might want to check this game out for yourself if you like the tales of series, especially the first game, since this sequel has a very, very addicting gameplay and battle system totally improved that literally made me so attached to it. Okay guys, that's it. Thanks for watching. Stay put because I'm going to show some honorable mentions that didn't make it on this top. They are good sequels, but they're not just my personal favorites, like these 10. So um, thanks for watching. As usual, don't forget to subscribe and share this video with your friends. And stay put again for part two, which is gonna be next Friday. See you next time.